evening, Cebu. Good evening, Philippines. It's open mic night tonight, and I have with me a very special friend who is from a very prominent family. <laughs> her grandfather was uh, governor of Cebu, and so was her mother, the first woman governor of Cebu, Gwen Garcia. She was very active in the social scene when she was back here, but now she's based in the U.S., and so we are privileged uh, that she is with us tonight as uh, she is in town for a few weeks. Yes, that's right. Carissa <laughs> Garcia Cordelia. Hi, Hi, Mike. Good evening. Thanks for having me here at the show. Uh, thanks for, for being here. How are you, Car? I'm well. Thanks for asking. Welcome home. Thank you. Welcome it's, home a, it's a pleasure to be back. Always, always a pleasure yes. to be back. Every homecoming is, is bittersweet. Uh, yes, but I try to eliminate the bitter and, you know, just uh, it's always short. savor the sweet. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. Yes. yes. So how, how are you? How is the U.S.? Uh, it's, um, I guess, it's transformed me and uh, in, in more a, ways than one. No? Yes, absolutely. And um, the, uh, the U.S. is the U.S. But then I like to think of it as a, you know, I'm a citizen of the world. So um, it, it's always yes. a flight away. I introduced uh, Carissa as the daughter of former Governor Gwen Garcia and the granddaughter of the esteemed Pablin Garcia. But she is way more than that. <laughs> she is her own person and I've seen her grow. Uh, literally and figuratively. There was a time when she was a lot younger. I, I, I even helped you enroll twice. <laughs> you <laughs> did, yes. I was like a, like a, like a guardian of some sort. My I, mentor in uh, a sense. In huh? a sense, but yeah. uh, I didn't really see you, you know, uh, <laughs> pursuing the direction I wanted to pursue for you because you had something else in mind, mm -hmm. which, which is good, no? which is good. Well, that's how I am. Yes. Uh, you know, people see uh, a path for me and whenever they start doing that, I seek out the other path to see if, uh, you know, I can thrive in a different arena. I'd like to expound what I, on what I was uh, trying to say. Mm -hmm. I was trying to mentor uh, Carissa in youth leadership simply because she comes from a long line of public servants. Uh, it's not just your mom and your grandfather, it's your uncles and uh, mm -hmm. your, your uh, cousins. But. Uh, like I said, she had something else in mind. I wasn't interested, so... Yeah, <laughs> you are always a rebel. Uh, well, some might say that, but then uh, I'd like to say... Uh, it's not a bad thing. It's not always a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. No, um, mm. I think I just tend to think differently. A non-conformist, I think, might be a better <laughs> word. <laughs> a very articulate non-conformist. <laughs> um, so, so far, where are you in your journey? Uh, I am, wow, that's a, I like that question. Uh, I'm at a point in my life where I'm actually, I'm, I'm here to, you know, every time I travel, I always try to find myself and uh, I'm searching for that one message, that one sign, you know, where do I go? Um, what should I do? And uh, I just, uh, uh, I've told you before, you know, um, I, I just switched careers and I'm going to, I'm going to be in tech um, starting November. Um, it's very different from uh, what your family does. Yes, however, uh, it'll always be a um, doing well wherever you are, in whatever mm. arena you are in. That'll, you know, whatever you do. Um, I'd like to think of it as my family is in service, really. In the service, service of the people yes. and you know there's no just because I'm not in politics does not mean I cannot serve the people yes I know you before you switched careers uh, to your current uh, career career path which is tech you were very active with World Vision and other uh, nonprofits yes, absolutely uh, I actually um, I ran campaigns for uh, uh, a, a nonprofit organization and I traveled quite a bit in the States, just uh, raising, uh, fu fundraising for... Um, Worthy causes. Yeah. And uh, I, I, th I recall that you were also very uh, active with the feminist uh, movement. Yes. You uh, were in Washington, D.C. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. Experience? I was a delegate for the National Youth uh, Feminist Leaders Conference. In the U.S.? In the U.S. Uh, for Arizona. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Representing Arizona. Yes, representing Arizona, uh, Arizona State University in particular. All right. And I had the pleasure of meeting Gloria Steinem. Wow. 
Um, Such they, an icon in the it, yes, it was, feminist movement. It, it is. And, you know, it just really gave me perspective. And, um, you know, the whole idea of being a feminist is really just uh, wanting equality for both sexes. That's right. And um, that's a... But is, um, is it still an issue uh, in this day and age? When we've had women CEOs, we've had two female uh, presidents, and who knows, Miriam mm -hmm. Santiago declared maybe she's going to be the third yes. uh, president of this country. And your mom broke the, the proverbial glass ceiling, as you said, uh, during her birthday mm -hmm. last week. No? Uh, in the province, after 400 years, more than 400 years, we've we already had a uh, woman governor. Mm -hmm. So in this day and age, is, is there no equality yet between men and women? Um, in the Philippines, actually, the UN declared uh, they were in the top top ten we are of in the top um, 10. yes uh, um, opportunities. Of opportunities for both men and women. However, uh, in the US, it's a different story. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a woman still earns seventy five cents less uh, to every man's do dollar that they oh. earn, uh, and um, that's a. Uh, that's a bit of a problem. I feel like we're back in the 50s. Mm -hmm. um, however, I think I don't just fight for women's rights. I fight for the right of, you know, just for everyone to have equal chance, an equal chance. And to answer your question, yes, absolutely. There, there's it's still that issue. notion of, um, you know, uh, say for example, a woman in politics versus a man in politics mm -hmm. or um, in, uh, and you have in the, in the like public people. arena. And they're more likely to say something about th that woman's clothes, like you know, their outfit or um, mention something about, oh look, you've gained so much weight or your hair is so beautiful. But would, would they ever say that to a man? They do criticize Donald Trump's hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we're going somewhere. So yeah. <laughs> well, it's also right, right, right back at you, Donald Trump, for being uh, all chauvinistic. Yes, I guess. exactly. So if you, but uh, if you dish some, you'd be able to. You should be able to take in mm -hmm. some, some of it, right? Uh, but candidates like Donald Trump actually make it make uh, this women equality issue still an issue. It is right? definitely. Yeah. So, but uh, does that make you a Hillary supporter? Uh, well, I I was a volunteer for um, CGIU, uh, wow. the Clinton Global yeah, I Initiative. I saw your photo also yes, with uh, President Clinton. Yes, yeah. uh, I met uh, Chelsea, Bill, and Hillary first name basis. Uh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, I am. I'm an ardent supporter of the Clinton Foundation mm -hmm. and what it is trying to achieve. They were a partner with World Vision. Yes. Um, yeah, were. Together with PNG, they brought clean water. The Clean Water Initiative was something that I campaigned for. Uh, so it's not just women's rights. No, it's a uh, women's children's uh, rights. Really? Uh, yeah, five key things: water, health, education, economic development, and nutrition. Once you give that to a community. Um, It'll thrive. So you see, you try to chart a separate course from your families, and I see that there is a distinction, and and uh, you made it very clear. Mm -hmm. But still, uh, the yearning for public service, for to for, just serve it, my community, it's still there. Absolutely, it's still there. Yes. So you can't completely separate, and you you don't mean to completely separate yourself from from uh, what your family has uh, has stood for all these years. Yes, it's like a. And with any other family, uh, I try. I tend. I look at it as a vocation mm. towards your community mm. and the people around you. Uh, Bill Gates never went into politics, but he's but Bill and Melinda Gates. But they're helping, you know, countless lives. Um, but are you closing your doors perpetually? To to public office. Uh. I didn't know the doors were open for me, but uh, no, if, I'd, 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 I, ha I would rather search for different avenues to serve um, my community. That doesn't involve elective office. Yes. For now, we have to pause for this break. Okay. Interesting, uh, fascinating conversation with the beautiful Carissa Garcia Cordelia. Open mic, we'll be right back.
we're back here with Carissa. Hi, Car. Again. Hi, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, since since uh, you were in college or mm. at the beginning of college and up to the present, it's been more than a decade now. Mm -hmm. And I remember at the time uh, you were very young and you were still trying to understand uh, this the the vocation, as you mentioned, that your mom decided to pursue mm -hmm. uh, in the service you know, in the service of the Cebuanos. And of course, you were young, and uh, you wanted your mom's attention. And I remember um, you had some issues with that, but you were trying to grapple. You're trying to wrap your head around this whole notion of public service. Uh, but in our recent conversations, you've somehow seen the whole point of it. Can you tell us uh, about the, you know, this this process that you've had to undergo? Uh, I guess I've had to transcend. Um, from you know one part of my life to the other but uh, not much has changed I'm still the same mm -hmm. I will always uh, question the norm and see if um, there's another way yeah. like I've said you know if everyone is gonna go into politics I'm gonna question the fact that hey maybe there's a way for me to help everyone else or um, is that a to do something. Is that a conscious effort on your part to always try to swim against the tide? I think this it's always the tide that's swimming against me. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's a matter of perspective. Okay. And uh, I've just been able to, I guess, um, course through life, um, navigating the waters just mm. uh, and coming out of it stronger. But I, I remember that there were times before that you sharply disagreed with your mom on some personal issues, but that lately you've conceded that uh, your mom has, has had the wisdom. Well, um, not just, uh, I don't think I ever disagreed with her public policy or uh, yes. her, um, uh, how she governed. Mm -hmm. um, granted, I did have, um, the, I guess when you look at it as a mother-daughter relationship, when your mother switches careers um, and you see, you know, the dynamic has changed, um, there will always be Adjustment. a reaction. Yeah. And uh, it just, um, I like to think at it, of it as my transformative years. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was also hers, in mm -hmm. a way. Ab absolutely, yes. Yeah. Like you said, you've seen your mom also grow. grow up. Yeah, yes, grow. yes, absolutely. Um, you know, they say that parents, um, as a mom, you watch your children grow, but um, in turn, as a child, I've also seen my mother grow. So. And we've seen you grow. Also, <laughs> Have you? Into yes. A, into a beautiful, fine, beautiful uh, oh, thank you. young lady. Um, you are a mother of two. Yes, uh, Izzy and Kira. They're um, eight and four, and uh, they're the light of my life. She's eight? Yes. Wow, time flies. <laughs> <laughs> she's in third grade, and uh, she's learning to code. What do you mean? Uh, like coding on the computer. She's oh learning gosh. Ruby on Rails. So I, I don't even know. How I that told works. her that if she develops an app one day, she might be able to make the world a better place. That's nice. I think uh, there ought to be more girls in she's pretty smart. science and tech. She was sell she's very entrepreneurial also. I saw I saw her selling stuff. <laughs> uh, actually she started her own business. Yes. Um, it's a dog grooming business mm -hmm. and she, you know, she gathered, she had a data collecting notebook that she did all on her own just by merely reading. And um, it just, you know, just watching her do all of that. Um, it's uh, wat watching the world through your child's eyes. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's interesting how uh, before the break we, t we were talking about uh, your passion for feminism, women's rights, mm -hmm. equality be between men and women. But it's, it's, it's very interesting to know that in your family, you have a lot of very empowered women. Your grandmother, uh, the esteemed uh, Judge Esperanza Garcia. Mm -hmm. uh, what she set up, the, the, the cooperative that she set up, is one of the most successful um, models yes. I have I have seen. Mm -hmm. uh, and from from a small amount, it has it's now what billions. Yes, uh, that that's what inspired me actually to get into uh, the nonprofit sector. Yeah. Back and your then. and your mom, even before she joined government service, she was already a successful businesswoman. Mm -hmm. Your sister, last week, filed her cert certificate of candidacy for mayor. Yes. And then you have your daughters uh, showing uh, so much potential. Mm -hmm. And your cousin, mm -hmm. your cousin, uh, Amy Wachow. Yes, yes, and we're very proud of her. Uh, 
Carissa's cousin is uh, is she a finalist? Uh, uh, um, I believe she is a uh, part of the on uh, route. The, 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 yeah. To be to being a finalist in uh, The Voice. Yes. Not in the Philippines, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us about the experience rooting for her? Uh, did you did you follow her uh, at the, the beginning of everything at The Voice? Um, yes, actually, we've uh, we've known. For quite some time, and uh, kept we, quiet. <laughs> you have to, but um, <laughs> um, and when it was finally time to tell everyone, um, we were so excited. I, I saw Amy uh, months before, mm -hmm. and she's been chasing this dream for quite some time. Um, but uh, she, yeah. What what a voice! Yes, it's it's the real. So. Oh gosh, I mean, <laughs> I, I uh, your cousin Miguel Garcia, a genius who's taking up his PhD in uh, University of Zurich. Mm -hmm. See, it's just all in your genes. <laughs> um, he gave me a link to uh, to Amy's uh, cover of La Vie en Rose. Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful. Have you heard it? Uh, no, I, I'm afraid <laughs> I haven't. I have to check that out. I I think in one sitting, I listened to it for more than 15 times. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful version. Mm -hmm. So, can you sing? Do you sing? Do you perform? Uh, I, I know you did theater. <laughs> I know you did theater. My life is a performance. <laughs> <laughs> and the world is your stage. Yes, it is. All, all the world's a stage. Yeah. That's what Shakespeare said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Coding Shakespeare now. <laughs> From public policy to Shakespeare. <laughs> I've, I've learned that since... Uh, well, I've always been into theater and I, I would join theater camps. And the first thing that I remember um, at around 8 or 10, I think I was sent to Manila to go on a, this one-week uh, theater camp for mm -hmm. kids and we've had we had to memorize uh, all the world's a stage by Shakespeare. Shakespeare but I was able to catch you a performance of yours uh, Henry Gaw's New Yorker in Tondo yes I little even, boy production yeah little yes. boy production I even have I even have the tarpaulin yes from yeah more than you told me I didn't ago. realize yes, that you did that's, until now <laughs> <laughs> it's some, one for a, it's a throwback material throwback Thursday material but uh, so uh, that was was it was that a childhood thing? Was it a young Carissa thing, uh, theater, or is it something that you would still want to pursue, especially that you're in the U.S.? Um, actually, art is always. I look. I always see myself as having the heart of an artist, mm -hmm. and and you are. Yeah, you're, you're a poet too. And I, at that I, time, that was just that just happened to be my medium. At that time. Mm -hmm. So meaning you've moved on from it. Uh. Well. Uh, it, it hasn't really presented itself um, and... Is it not something you would want to chase after? Like theater or acting? Well, I tried. Um, I, did, uh, I did in college back in the States. In the States. And, and I actually did some productions, but um, it's just not something that is uh, in the near future for me. I don't think so, but I, I don't like to... Um, you never know, yeah. You don't want yeah, to. I don't, I don't want to preempt things. The universe. So yeah. <laughs> you don't want to preempt the universe. Yes. You but just I, want to be open for whatever happens. Exactly. I don't see it in my cards, uh, though. Well, I, I bring it. I, I decided to bring it up because yours is a beauty that is kind of amb ambiguous. <laughs> I mean, I mean, ambiguous in a sense that if you're in the U.S., they wouldn't exactly know where you're from, mm -hmm. whether you're Latina or you're Asian or a mix. What? I mean, what do they say? Do you have? people making uh, guesses like that? Yes, but I try to steer the conversation away from that. From because race. I would, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, what really irks me sometimes is when people say, you know, where are you from? And then, well, I'm from this town. And then they say, no, where are you really from? Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's a video that went viral. Exactly, <laughs> yes. And I think I might have shared yeah, that. Yeah. But um, what I, I want to, I want to, change the course of the conversation because I want people to find out, you know, is there content behind that character, behind that persona, behind that person? Because Carissa is a citizen to the world. <laughs> of the, world, the world, yes. yes. <laughs> but again, we have to pause for another break. It's always been thin with Carissa. <laughs> Open mic, we'll be right back. We're back here at Open Mic with Carissa. So, Car, um, are there any? Is there anything from your past that you would want to change? I ask this because you've lived, for a 28-year-old, you've lived a very storied life mm -hmm. thus far. Your friends know this. Your family knows this. Um, 
is there anything that you would change if you could turn back time? If I could turn back time, I, I would probably tell myself to be more grateful. Mm -hmm. Of um, just, mm. a, I don't think I was very grateful. Um, grateful to? Towards everything, the mm. universe, the kindness around me, the people around me. And that's something that I wish to espouse uh, every day. It's not too late. <laughs> uh, yes, it never is. And I, I'm always grateful. You started to become more grateful than you were. I think then. so. How, how do you show gratefulness? Uh, is it just the state of mind or is it actually saying thank you? Or It's or both. both. Yes, uh, towards, you know, your actions show that you're grateful. Mm -hmm. um, if, uh, and being kind to everyone else. But what about the course of your life so far? Mm -hmm. Is there anything that, um, you know, if, if you had the power in your hands to change your I narrative? You know, there is absolutely... Now, when you, when you ask me that question, I don't think so. Because I wouldn't be where I am now. I wouldn't have, had it not been the set of, for, had it not been sum. for the set of experiences the that sum I... of your choices. Yes, exactly. And um, I think this sum is not a very bad one, no, so... No, not a bad <laughs> one at all. <laughs> like I said, you're a lot more beautiful now than you were already. Uh, I mean, you were already beautiful last year, but you're a lot more beautiful now. You're oh, more, thank what you. What is it? You know, I mean, it's the right weight, the right hair, the right glow. You really want to know? Yes inner peace <laughs> <laughs> no char no char no really it is uh, just um, inner peace to be more comfortable with yourself uh, and I think uh, this is something that a lot of girls do to themselves they're not very comfortable or happy with what they you know what they have or who they are and to just be I, I think that's it to it's just be confident confidence yes you get that for your, from your mom also uh, the confidence. The confidence. Uh, I don't know, because I still has... second guess myself quite a bit. And uh, I think everyone does. Yes. I don't think it's right to also be overconfident and to never question your actions. Mm -hmm. I mean, to never second guess yourself. Actually, um, it brings me back to this um, this one thing, kind of my mantra, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, um, you know, it harkens back to what Roosevelt said about daring greatly. Which Roosevelt? Uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Okay. So, um, only those who dare greatly can ever achieve greatly. And who dare to fail greatly can never achieve greatly. So, if I, even if I don't feel so confident about anything, if you just show up, stand up, and, you know. Speak up. Just speak up, um, face your demons. Um, <laughs> and you, you know, even if you've, you've failed, at least you know that you've tried. tried. And that's right. It's very nice, very mature. And uh, it's, that's right. No? You estimated your, you've estimated yourself uh, just right. That you're still a lot uh, like you were before. Mm -hmm. But uh, you've also somehow grown. It's more mellow. <laughs> Is the, key, is the term there. <laughs> but you've always been dramatic, huh? <laughs> You've always I been poetic or yeah. dramatic, whatever it's, the case may be. Drama follows me, so. <laughs> <laughs> You're a star. It's how I handle it, yeah. <laughs> Am I really? Well, actually, my mom named me Maria Estela Teresa, oh, so star. after a star. Yes. I didn't know that, Estela. Oh no, I know it because mm -hmm. of because of your um well we enroll I enrolled you. <laughs> <laughs> I know your name. Yes, that's right. Estela, that's mm -hmm. right. So you're a star. Not a diva. A star. <laughs> no, no, never. Um but where do you see yourself uh, ten years from now? In a Chanel power suit. <laughs> a leader. Uh a woman leader. Yes. In the US. In the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, that's that's nice. I mean, and I'm sure you'll fit it just right. And this is me being sexist. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. You look really good in your in your outfits. What's your fashion sense like? Um, I tend to go for, you know, if I look at this, if I if I get photographed, or if ever this image becomes immortalized, will it look good 10, 15 years from now? Mm. So classic. Really elegant classic yeah like this what do you think <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful Thank but you. you were planning on wearing something else 
Um, yes, yeah, same color though, but uh... You like blue? Is I your, do, yes. Is it your favorite color? Uh, yes, uh, it's a... Uh, it's become it's 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 been it's become actually a a favorite of mine over the past few years. It's rather masculine, or is that a stereotype? I believe so. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, when my kids were growing up, I mean, even as they grow up now, I always, you know, tell them that girls can wear blue and boys can wear pink. It doesn't matter. That's girls true. can play with, you know, why do we have to assign gender to a toy or a color? It doesn't have one. Or a room. Yes, exactly. But uh, blue, is it your favorite color to wear? It's really your favorite color. Uh, it's my favorite color to wear. I, I've found a lot of my dresses have been in blue, but um, although it changes, um, mm -hmm. you know, they're always variable. So, um, last year, I was always wearing black. What's your quirk? My quirk? There are many. Uh, regarding what? The most outrageous, the most out of this world quirk that uh, you're... Outfit-wise? Uh, oh, in general. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like, I walk at night when mm -hmm. everyone else is asleep. <clears throat> I walk outside. Okay, really? Yeah. Uh, I, my quirk would be, I think, I like to cook things up on a whim. Um, I don't know if that's even a quirk. I, I make stuff. Uh, make stuff up. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, out of food. Yeah. That's something edible. And you can make it up as you go along. Yes. Like, put whatever. Mm hmm so have you discovered like a recipe that you actually took note of? Um, there are many actually. That's based a, on just uh, experimentation. Yes, um, I, I like you know, I like challenging my senses. And so okay, cooking we, does that. At the beginning, we talked about your journey. Mm -hmm. uh, is this where you've always envisioned yourself to be? At, yes, As a child, at open mic. <laughs> <laughs> Guessing for no, I mean in life. Is this? Did you ever uh, see yourself before, as mm -hmm. you know, growing up, that uh, that you would be where you are right now? I think so because growing up, I saw my mom as a businesswoman, mm. and she was always, you know, waking up in the morning in business clothes, heading to the office. I'd follow her, and that to me was, you know. I always saw myself as that, like I, I knew that I was going to be that. Um, and so I feel as if, maybe I didn't really envision it, but I always feel like I, I became the person that I, who was very influential to me. Mm -hmm. So That's um, your mom? Yes. And I'm the same way with my children, um, you know. I, we get up early in the morning and uh, I head for work and they, had, they go to school. And each generation? Mm -hmm from your mom to you, you to your children, we see a better world for women, right? Yes, and that's the goal. It's um, for women and, and the men role as to well. Play, and a role for you to play. Yes, exactly. To play in, but you know, for someone, I think it might have been Gloria Steinem that said, um, for every girl that is, um, you know, disadvantaged, there is a boy out there with, you know, so much pressure on him. Um, to excel or to, um, you know... Or a gay boy. Yes, it, that too. Um, uh, but I think we all, everyone wants the same. You know, when it comes to, no matter where, where we're from, you know, man, woman, um, girl, boy, no matter where we are, um, when it comes to what makes us laugh or cry, we are more or less the same. Yeah, yeah. more or less. Yes, that's, a, it's humanity, really. But when it all is said and done, this is my last question. Has it been? <laughs> <laughs> when, all is said and, when all is said and done, who is Carissa Garcia Cordelia? Um, just a, a woman of the world. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Carr. It was uh, exciting having you here. Let's continue the conversation at dinner. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately for everyone, you can't eavesdrop anymore. <laughs> We're joining a, a dear old friend of ours, Eric. Uh, so until next week, this has been your host, Mike Lopez. We had Carissa Garcia Cordelia tonight. Next week, uh, stay tuned as we'll have another interesting, fascinating guest here on Open Mic. Till next, good night and Godspeed. <laughs>